Okay, so we've looked at how to select edges and how to set those initial radii on the edges. Once you get past that stage, when you've selected all the edges, you then get to sort of a second stage of the fillet edge command, which has a whole another set of command line options, which we'll take a look at, including a bunch of stuff that deals with setting the radii more specifically rather than globally for the whole edge. You can get in there and in detail make changes to the radii that you're setting on the fillet. So I'm going to start the command again, get some edges selected, and then I'll show you uh, how those handles work and how you can interact with them. All right, so fillet edge. I'm going to make a crossing selection here and get all these edges selected. They're all set to three currently. And I hit enter and now I get into this second stage. And this is where we see all the edge handles. And it turns out you can interact with these individually. So I can grab a point here and make that edge, that radius right there, larger. So at the opposite end of this edge, it's still three. And here I've got something over five. If you want to actually see what's going on and watch the fillets that Rhino thinks it's going to make, you can click on preview and it will generate a preview and you can actually see what's going on a little better. So you can drag these interactively or type a number, make that smaller, right? You can select multiple handles at once and type in a radius for all of them at once, right? So I'm now making tapered fillets here by just changing the radius on the fillet. So let's look at the command line options. Show radius equals yes, no. So that just lets you see more clearly what the actual preview looks like. Add handle. So in any point, you can add a new handle. These handles are in their default locations, but you can add a handle at a particular radius. So here, this one is still remembering our three radius, but we can set that to, let's say, one. And now we'll add a radius one handle, and you'll see what happens here is it makes that radius exactly one. It stops the tapering between the end and where I've added my handle, and then it starts to vary the radius from there. We can move that around, and we can copy it to a different location. Okay, so we can copy handles, move them around, add them, and you can remove them. So I don't like what I did there. Click on remove and enter, and it goes back to how it was. So you get to add, copy, remove handles, and set all. So if you've been monkeying around, as I've been showing you here, with all different radii, and basically you want to go back to, to set them all, you can set them all at once to say two. And now you've got a box that's got all uh, the same radii. And then whenever you make a change, you may want to link these handles. So right now, if I change that one, it goes to three, just that one handle changes. But if I click on this link handles and set it to yes, then whatever I do to one handle will be propagated to all the other handles. So I can just kind of watch that whole box be filleted at a different radii, right? And it just is all connected. So that's the link handles equals yes part. We'll look at the rail types and the different types of generating the rails that you can do in Rhino in a, a separate file. Select edges lets you go back to the edge selection stage. So basically you're going back to that first stage and you can remove edges or add edges and get a different set of edges altogether. So essentially you can toggle back and forth between those, those states of selecting edges or dealing directly with the uh, handles and the different radii.